All right, so when we have, first of all, both of these lines are in what type of form? Standard. Yeah, it's the easiest to deal with them in this form. So anytime we're looking for stuff, whenever we have like addition and subtraction, we want to have everybody in standard form. So these guys are already in standard. What we're going to notice is at this point, if we look down like this, do we have one of the variables where it is a number and it's exact opposite? Yes. Yes. Right here, these two are opposites of one another, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's underneath this particular heading. If they are already opposites of one another, what we're going to do is we're going to line this up like an addition problem, and we are actually going to add straight down the columns is all we're going to do. So when we have this, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down each column and add. So, if I add 4x plus 3x, what do I get? Plus 7x. Yes. 6x and negative 6y, or 6y and negative 6y are? Zero. Goes away. And then 32 plus 3 is? 35. Yes. Now, I eliminated one variable. This is why they call it elimination. He just went away. So now, can I solve 4x? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I divide both sides by 7. I get that x is? Correct. Why did we not learn this first? Yeah, seriously. What could because they, not all of them were opposites. Now, once we found the first one, what do we do? We're going to take this value in. Substitute. Yeah. Oh, so we still have to do substitute. Yeah, in a way. It's going to be a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. I told you in the beginning, I use the substitution method. I use it way less than I use the other two that we're going to talk about today and next week. So now I'm going to put this back into one of the equations. So X is five. So I'm going to do it in this one. So four times five plus six Y is 32. 20 plus six Y 32, subtract 20, what does that give me? 12. So y is 2. Wait, which one did we put, we put it into I put it back at the very top. I chose that one just because it wasn't a negative. I wasn't going to have to divide by a negative, so I knew that I had one less step to do there. So now, I have a value which says 5, 2. So we have one solution. That is where those two lines connect. So it's not parallel, it's not infinite. It is, in fact, one solution only. Now I've written quite large. So now we have to do if they're not already opposites. You may have to write a little bit smaller because I'm going to need about that much room for this guy, too. Man, why in the world don't choose that example? All right, now again, we have got, we're always looking to try to go down the columns and see if we have people that match. Five and nine, not the same number, right? But these guys are the same number. However, they are not opposites of each other. That's right, so anybody have any idea what I could do to one of the lines to make it an opposite? Yes? Multiply it by negative. There you go. I can multiply everybody in one of these lines by negative. So let's choose the guy on the bottom, just because it's easiest. I'm going to multiply everybody down here by negative. 
So if they are not already opposites, but the numbers match exactly, we're just gonna multiply that whole line by a negative. So if the numbers match, we're just gonna multiply that whole line by a negative. So I chose the bottom line. I'm sorry, I'll carry it up here so we can see a little bit better from the back. So I have 5x plus 2y equals 6. When I multiply negative times 9x, I get negative 9x. Negative times 2y, negative 2y, and then negative to double deuce. Now, do I have guys that are opposites at this point? Yes. Yes, yes I do. So just like in the other one, we are going to Go down the columns. So 5x and negative 9x. Negative 4x. Negative 4x. Mug bell. This is where you struggle. So, the video is for her. Make sure that you're really careful with your integers. I see if you guys make a mistake, it is usually with integers. It's not with any of the really hard stuff. It is remembering one's negative, one's positive. If you get to a point to where you really are screwing that up, punch it in your calculator. Um, 2y, negative 2y. Hello? 2y, two negative 2y two gives us zero. zero. Thank you. 6 it. and negative 22. Hello. Again, this is integers. That's negative 16. So I have negative 4x equals negative 16. So you tell me what's x. x it's equals negative 4. four. Uh, positive 4. That's yeah. Again, integers are biting us in the rear end. we got to be real careful. Integers. Numbers that are positive or negative that are whole. So now, once I have this, what am I going to do? Plug it in the top. There you go. I'm going to take it back to one of the lines. you got to take it back to the one that you did not change. So, I'm going to say, sub-value into the line you did not change. So it has to be one of the original lines. So you can't go back to like these two, like this one that I messed up. By doing a negative, I got to take it back to something I haven't touched. I have not touched this guy. So I'm going to do 5 times 4 plus 2y equals, is that 6? Yeah. So 20 plus 2y equals 6. Subtract 20 on both sides. What is that? 2y equals negative 14. So y is negative 7. So that point is four comma negative seven. Absolutely, I will. And that will be all that goes on your flip chart. We'll do our examples in your like actual notebook. Did everybody get it to fit on one page? Yeah. Good. So does it matter what line you multiply by negative? Or line no. Uh-uh. Just as long as you make sure you're only multiplying one line by negative. A very good question. That'll be next week. If there are no numbers that match exactly, we actually have to multiply an entire line by a number in order to make them match. Those are a little bit harder. But for today, the numbers are going to be opposites already, or you're just going to have to multiply by negatives. It is, but again, you got to solve for y too. And when you graph, you don't necessarily get a really good answer because sometimes you're going to get nasty ones for these. Carter got some really weird stuff. Like they have, um, in pre-calculus, you have systems of equations, and it's three lines instead of just two. So, like, you've got to eliminate one of the lines in order to get to two, in order to eliminate one of the variables, and it gets really complicated. 
What's the real life application for this? Finding the intersection of lots of stuff. Being an engineer. Honestly. I'm not going to lie and say you're going to use this every single day. You probably won't. Just depends on what you do. Or for if you're our school, you have to find the intersection of the amount of students that can come to the amount of teachers we have and the payment. Could be, very much so. See, that's, that's my, that's my, that's my, my go-to answer to all this stuff. Sometimes you got to use that. All right, so let's look at an easy one to start. So this is just examples. You can put this in your notes, not in your little flip chart. So we'll start with an easier one. Why is this an easier one? Because two numbers are already opposite. Yeah, these guys are already opposites. So do I have to change anybody? No. Nope. I just get to go straight down. So I draw myself kind of an addition line. These guys go away. What do I have right here? 7y. 7y equals? 38 and 4 is? 22. So that means y is? 6. Perfect. What do I do with the 6? Mm -hmm. so Alright, so we'll go back to the first one. We say 8x plus 5 times 6 is 38. So 8x plus 30, 38. Ooh, that's going to be a pretty number. Yep, we get 8x equals 8, which means x is 1. Yep. So these two lines intersect at 1, 6. I don't know. I wish you could too. What are you doing? This is why Brady said elimination is so much easier. It is. But now I'm going to ask you this question. Does he ever say you have to do it by substitution on this particular problem? Mm -hmm. Yes. So again, you have to know how to do the different kinds. Wait, but why would we make you do it so Again, the ACT will ask something stupid like, if you were to substitute a value into the second line for X, what would that value be? And you have to know, okay, I have to solve for X at the top line and put this in there. They'll just ask weird things. All right, so let's look at one where we have to change. All right, so on this problem, do we have opposites already? No. No. We have matching. We have matching, which means somebody's got to change. You get to choose. You want to change the top or the bottom? I want to change the top. We want to change the top. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite it. We're just multiplying the negative by everybody. Negative 5x plus y equals? And then I'm just going to write this dude right underneath it. Now, you try this on your paper, and let's see if we get the same answer. Yeah, I hope not. So once you solve, take a look. Did we get the same thing? Yes. Man, governor's cup yesterday. Mm-mm. You know, like yeah, but the one that they did ask you all do know. It said four minus x 
is greater than like 12. Yeah, I was getting there. So getting you subtract four, you get negative X is greater than eight. You can't leave it this way, so that's X is less than negative eight. That's why he ended up getting it. Remember, you gotta flip the sign. He didn't get it. He didn't, he didn't, get, didn't get it. Get it. He didn't oh, I thought he, he did. Put X he was closer than he did. Yeah. I did something terrible. They love the tricky thing. You mean on this guy right here? Yeah. What part? Did you get the first one? No, I've got X equals I can't oh, believe no, I just, Lewis I got the answer. Henry I just wrote it down wrong. Sorry. That's strange. Mr. Lewis missed the Henry Clay question, remember? Yeah. I know. I, was the Henry I came in at the end, so I didn't get to see it. Oh. And everyone literally, like, freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Henry Clay. And everyone was like, Mr. Lewis. Everyone was like, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> 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 he said that he was trying to 